Welcome to Tea Time with Mr. T. I am going to be drinking today 2016 Li Ming Zhao Chun Yin Hao Raw Pu'er. Comes in a 200 gram cake. Looks like this. I've broken into most of this. I've already got it broken up in, in my uh, Gaiwan. Now with Shang, I brew by intuition. And that, I don't do that with other teas, just with Shang. If you have this tea, or have any any tea basically, sip along with me and we can both enjoy the tea together, enjoy our teas together. Just wait for the water to heat up. Uh, let's see what the dry leaves smell. This is a clay, clay easy guy one, by the way. This was, I think it was Guangzhou Natural Storage or something like that. Guangdong, Guangdong, something like that. Guangzhou, I think it was. Not really getting much off the dry leaves. It's kind of hard pressed in cakes. It's not like some of these higher end cakes that are pressed real easy that you can break up real easy. A little bit of earthiness with a little bit of brown sugar and maybe some aged smell that isn't from more humid storage. I'm going to give this one two rinses since it's ten year, over 10 years old. Then I'll tell you what the wet leaves smell like. Rinse is kind of incensey, like a maybe. Mm, ow. Maybe some fruit, brown sugar. Gonna feed my tea pats here. Burnt my lip. Let's give this a second rinse. If you hear noise in the background, that's my pet, my dad and my brother talking in the other room. This is what the second wrench looks like. It's dark, a little bit darker. It gets even darker the more you steep it. More incense. Brown sugar, that slightly metallic aged taste that you might get, smell that you might get with a uh, aged shing, shung. Slight fruitiness. I'm gonna take a little bit of this for this uh, rinse here. I always do it with the second rinse. Musty. That's all I mainly taste on the on the ranch's mustiness. The wet leaves have a wood kind of smell. A little bit of mustiness. Some stewed fruit.
maybe some hay or grass very slightly produce aisle in those in a store like vegetables hmm leaves are they look to be more coarse cut there there's a lot of chopped leaves in here and doesn't look like there's a lot of there's doesn't look like there's a lot of uh oh whole leaves in here so I expect this might be a lower quality tea I can't say anything about Li Ming because I've never had I don't know if they're considered high quality or not let's give this a first steeping here this one I don't mind letting it brew a little bit longer than usual than I usually do Liquor looks more red, reddish brown now. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit darker now. Now, and here I'm getting more something like cereal grains, slight incense. Give it a second brew. See what this empty guy one smells like first. Not really getting anything from the empty guy one. Just the slightest hint of caramelized sugar or caramelized fruit, caramelized brown sugar. Only very, very slightly. Temperature is at 205 now. Usually I use boiling, but I'm trying to keep make this video as sh short as I can. This tea, if I remember it correctly, because it's been a been a while since I've had it. The cha, the cha chi is pretty pretty good on it. I think I've gotten tea drunk on it a couple of times. Um, can I turn my AC on? It's a little warm in here. But just ignore the loud buzzing. I don't have a choice. Um, seems like it made me a little tea drunk last time I had it. Oh, I probably oversteeped. Probably be a little bitter this next one. There's a lot of foam at the top of this. I don't know if you can see it, but a lot of foam. Usually that's a saponin, as far as I understand it, and sometimes it's natural sugars and stuff that do it. Let's break into the first steeping here. Mustiness is there, along with little vegetal notes. Something like hay. No bitterness. It is like you wouldn't expect. Well, there's a musty bitterness, but it's very light. Cream. Earth. I 
just the slightest, slightest hint of a rice, toasted rice note. I overbrewed this one, I think, because you can see how dark it is. It's an accident. I'm going to do five infusions and then finish the rest off after this is over. Unless the time, unless I think the time is, unless I think I can take more time. This one will probably be bitter. I almost guarantee it. A little bit of a longer one, but I'm probably gonna flash the bit. A lot of foam. And broken leaves when you don't use this grainer. A lot of them come in to the Gondal Bay. A second. What? Sorry. I thought my parents and my dad needed me. Yeah, this one, this steeping is a little bitter. I'm sorry to disturb you while you're doing your tea review there. Uh, do you have a direct express account on your phone? No. Your card? Okay, I'm going to make one. Sorry for interrupting you. That's all right. This man knows everything about tea, fellas. Thank you. Sorry about that. Yeah, this one's a little bitter. More of that toasted rice and cream note, though. woodiness too. It's not all that sweet, but again, I overbrewed this one. Steep number three. Shoot. Got some leaves in my cup. That one lit has an interesting smell. It's hard to describe. It's like it evolved into interesting. It falls into slight brown sugar. I'll show you the leaves after this one. So, uh, I'm, I've really been getting into Shang Shung here recently. Sorry, I keep messing up the word. I got a 2019 Golden Pig Young Shang Shung, sorry. And I will be reviewing that at some point in the future. I'm going to probably try to do a review a day until, uh, until I get all all caught up and then I'll be reviewing teas that come in um, it's a pretty good tea I mean it's not spe it's not as special I mean I drink it but it's not like something I like to drink every day this was my first and no this is my set the second tea that I've had that would that had uh, humid notes I'm sure you can see the leaves here it's all cut up and broken up. Boom. 
tea soup has taken on a darker red color. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of foam on it still. That either means pesticides, as, as far as I understand it, that either means pesticides or a lot of saponins. Sweetness. Interesting. Let's try this one. Bitterness is a little bit, is creeping up a little bit. Little bit of slight fruit, sour fruit. It, it, it's the mouthfeel. It's, it's about medium thickness. It feels viscous, but the feeling of it in your mouth and throat lasts longer than some other teas I've had. It, it, you can feel it right here when you drink it. Feel it coat right here. Try something. That's about the right color. This is my first video in a while, so this is like a test to make sure I can do this. You get that rice note in the liquor. Right off the bat, like uh, like sweet rice. If you've ever lived, if you've lived in the United States, sometimes for breakfast, some people here like to take rice, milk, and sugar and butter. The, you know, they they boil the rice and they put butter in it and sugar in it, and then some cinnamon and some milk, and have it as breakfast, like a hot cereal. That's what this reminds me of. A little bit of vanilla. I believe this is number three. Um, put in the comments what your favorite type of tea is and if you have any questions just put them in the comments and I'll I might not be able to get to it right away, but I'll definitely be answering your questions. I promise. I won't ignore your questions. I'll answer everybody's questions. As long as it pertains to tea, or about my channel, or myself. Unless it pertains to the... If it, if it doesn't pertain to those things, I won't answer them. But, like, if it pertains to those, I'll definitely answer them. So, be aware of that. At least I like corn from a height. Aerates the tea a little bit. Hmm. The bitterness, you can feel it on the tip of your tongue and on the roof of your mouth. You can taste it there. The ricey just comes in through after that. A little bit of astringency. I wasn't really expecting that for something from 2006. More complex than what I figured it would be. You can feel the astringency right here too. It's really dry. It's kind of drying. The chi, cha chi is quite strong on this. I'm already feeling it. Hay, dirt, but it's not really unpleasant dirt. I know that sounds weird, it's not really unpleasant. That 
woody note is still there. Number four here. All that sweet rice is there. Man, that's good. Maybe some fruit, sweet rice, sweet sweet white rice with raisins. Some stewed fruit like raisins. Milk, cream. Water heated up here again. I'm going to take some time while this is brewing and fold up my this tea cake here so while this water is heating up. Give me just a minute and I'll get back with you. Just a minute here. This label's a little fragile, so. Not perfect, but that'll work. Oh, leaves are chocolate brown. Maybe chocolate yeah. brown. Um, these soap bubbles seem to last for quite a while in this in this tea. Let's get to tasting this while that one brews. A little bit more bitter. No hoi gan, which is unfortunate. At least not in this deep. And, and, contra and c contrary to what my dad says, I don't know everything about tea. I'm still learning. Maybe some baker's chocolate. Little tiny hint of sweetness on that one. Hay, earth. Has some notes that are that you also find in chew in it. Still drying a little bit. Toasted rice is still there, but it's a little bit different. A little bit of ve um, vegetal note to it. Let's brew another one, shall we? Yeah, I'm getting baker's chocolate in this. That's what it reminds me of. Generally, when I'm tasting these teas, I say the first thing that comes to mind when I'm tasting it, because that I think that's the best impression. But I'm getting baker's chocolate, so that's kind of something I also get in shoe. But this is definitely not old enough to be a shoe. To have the same profile, it's a little different. Really foamy, like I said. Strange. This is number five. 
I believe. Earth. Baker's chocolate. Wood. Something like maybe yeah, that toasted, that rice, that breakfast rice is there. Toasted breakfast rice. Feel it in the throat. It's not, it's not, it doesn't close your throat, but it leaves a, a warmth and a, 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 a viscous feeling in your throat. I don't know if the Chinese have a word for that or not. Oh, there's a little bit of sweetness right there on the first on it when you when you first at this steep number five when you bring it in immediately there's sweetness but but it's not like a lingering sweetness it's, it's like uh, it's like uh, it's there and it's gone it's a pop pop of sweetness little minerally like licking a rock, like slate or chalk. Musty note's still there, which is weird. It's a fifth steep. It should have steeped out by now. I'm not getting those metal notes. If you've had this tea, put in the comments below what you if you enjoyed it. I'm also going to put the link to this one in the thing below if you're interested in buying it. It's 200 gram cake. Comes from uh, King Tea Mall. I'm going to give this. This one will be number is six. This current steeping will be number six, and this one I got in here will be number seven, and I'll be finished. So I'm going to turn my water off. This kind of tea, this tea here, it could, you could steep it all day. These kind of teas, this one and the other one that's been dry, that's been a more humid stored, you can, you can have them all day. You can get many, many infusions out of them and they won't really lose their flavor. I think I stopped, stopped counting at like 12 or 13. And that's when I that's when I was I had too much tea and I stopped. I just couldn't do it anymore. And even then, when I had that much, <clears throat> the flavor was still there and strong. A little bit of a vegetal aftertaste. A little bit lighter this time, but I didn't let it brew as long as I did the last one. That. Breakfast rice said it's amazing. I bet this would do good if you put it in a pumador. I don't use I don't have one of those. I just keep my tea out on my desk. Not this desk, but my other one. Looks like this this time. A little bit like a golden brown red. slight fruitiness like prunes sweet now it's sweet it's like a it's weird it's like a sweet baker's chocolate but baker's chocolate is usually bitter because it doesn't have sugar in it but if you mix baker's chocolate with sugar that's what this and, and tasted it that's what this tastes like a little hints of it right on the tip of the tongue wood still there. Mustiness is, ooh, what's that? Toblerone almost. I would call it Toblerone. Don't know why, but that's the first thought that came to head.
rice really comes through in the back taste. Well, it's my last one. Don't mind my dad, by the way. He, I told him, but he, that was probably important. I'm gonna leave that in here because I don't know in this video. So I don't know how to edit, and I don't want to start this video over again. So I'm gonna leave it in here. I don't really care. This is all about the tea, the tea journey. The saltiness. Back of the throat, salty in the back of the throat and on the tongue. If that makes any sense. Steep number seven, by the way, I think. If I'm wrong, tell me how many I've went through in the comments below. Savory, like a broth. Baker's chocolate hint is not really there this time. Take that back, it's on the aftertaste. Sits all right in the stomach. Very warming. I would still recommend eating something with this. Let's see what the leaves smell like now. Lid has had a, <clears throat> a tested toasted rice note, rice note, vegetal. Grassy hay. Hmm. Well, if you've had this tea, if you've had this tea, and you drank it with me, I hope you enjoyed your session with me. If not, you still drank tea with me, I hope you enjoyed it. If not, drink tea and be happy. I'm Mr. T. Not, not, not like Alpha, or whatever it's called. Not like, uh, what do they call that? A-team, not like that. I'm Mr. T as in T, as in Cha. Well, this is Mr. T, and I'm signing off. Stick around for my next video, probably sometime this week, probably.